EagleView Arms presents video number two using the EVA Model C TB stub kit to make contender barrels. Let me introduce you to the best way to make uh, contender barrels. Our monolithic stubs are unique in the contender world, uh, providing a strong, positive way of making uh, barrels that fit both the contender and G2 frames. The stub is a way of uh, giving you an interface between your frame and your barrel that uh, we've done all the hard work to prepare for you. All you need to do is thread it and chamber it and do some minor fitting and you have your uh, contender, new contender barrels. Many gun shops have a barrel of barrels that they've taken off actions. Uh, here I have a brand new 17 Remington barrel taken off of a CZ 527 rifle. And uh, I'm going to convert it into a 17 Hornady Hornet uh, using uh, a uh, Model C uh, barrel stub. And it is one of the several barrels that I will use uh, during this video to uh, show you how to mount barrels on the stubs. Whether we use a takeoff barrel or a barrel blank uh, to uh, build a contender barrel, we will have to modify it to fit the stub. Here is a sectioned uh, stub and a barrel blank that has been already threaded uh, that shows what uh, we'll be doing in the uh, next few frames on this uh, video. It helps if you're going to use a takeoff barrel to know what the chamber is and uh, uh, chamber uh, reamer drawings are a quick way to uh, get the measurements you need to know where you need to cut the barrel off so you can freshen up the chamber with whatever new uh, reaming you're going to use. Comparing this uh, Hornady Hornet uh, reamer uh, print with the 17 Remington print I could tell how much I needed to cut off the end of the barrel to get me down into the neck where I could start a fresh chamber. From the drawings I determined I needed to cut about 1.505 inches off the end of the barrel to have a clean uh, chamber to work with. Marking that point uh, in the dicom uh, and then taking it back to the horizontal bandsaw to do a quick cut off. Right after the cut on the saw you can see the uh, chambered part of the barrel standing up and how much we took off to make sure that we were into fresh meat with the uh, new reamer. Measurements show that by the time I uh, face off the breech and uh, recrown the muzzle that I'll have just a little over 22 inches of barrel uh, with this takeoff barrel. I face off the cutoff barrel and then uh, machine in a 60 degree bevel into the uh, new chamber area. I also do the same thing on the muzzle uh, to fit up the uh, centers uh, as we're going to go between centers uh, with this barrel. Mounting the barrel up between centers using a face place and a lathe dog. If the finish is going to be kept, uh, it pays to uh, pat it with some paper uh, in the lathe dog. I use a live center on the uh, tailstock uh, to uh, hold the barrel and uh, get ready for uh, threading. I measure the outside diameter of the barrel and then uh, turn it down to about uh, 0 0.820. That's just a little, little larger than the stub. Uh, it gives us plenty of room to blend in. I paint a large band of uh, dicom layout die uh, on the uh, barrel and then mark it off with the calipers at about 2.35 inches. 
I use the cutoff tool to define the uh, threaded area uh, of the barrel. I use uh, carbide uh, inserts and uh, micro mist coolant uh, as I'm cutting the barrel down to uh, 0 0.6875 to prepare for threading. I use a uh, carbide lay down threading tool but a high speed threading tool will work as well. Uh, just make sure you're centered uh, on your barrel uh, and uh, can cut a proper uh, thread. I mark the threaded portion with dicom and then make a scratch pass just to make sure everything is working right before I actually start cutting threads. Using a set of 0 0.02406 wires uh, and measuring over the threads uh, going for an ideal of 0 0.6933 plus or minus two thousandths uh, will give you uh, excellent threads. Uh, I also use uh, clay to hold my thread wires since I'm kind of clumsy with these little small wires. The, the clay holds and, and helps me, gives me another hand. Then I use the cutoff tool again to square up the shoulder and relieve any radius that the threading tools might have left. Uh, you don't want to cut this any deeper than the minor diameter of the thread, but uh, make sure that shoulder is absolutely perfectly 90 degrees to the bore. To have a smooth and predictable face at the breech end of the barrel, uh, we use a smooth shoulder that is about uh, 0 0.550 in length. This uh, is turned down to the minor diameter of about uh, 0 0.63 inches and uh, should extend back into the threading enough to clear the tapered uh, threads left from the tap. Here we are turning down that smooth shoulder. The real check for sizing is to make sure you can thread your stub on. So here we're trying it out. It should thread on with a firm, uh, not loose uh, threading uh, so that uh, you know that the threads are tight. If the barrel hangs up on the smooth shoulder, then reduce the diameter of the barrel by about two thousandths and keep trying till it goes in smoothly but without leaving a large gap. You don't want a big dark uh, ring around your uh, barrel uh, on the breech end. Here I'm using the EVA uh, contender vise as a wrench, uh, threading the uh, barrel onto the stub uh, using the chuck and chuck key and the wrench in combination to, to thread this. Uh, this uh, fitting should be fairly st stiff. When the barrel is threaded all the way through the stub, it should exceed the stub by about 50 thousandths of an inch. Uh, I do this just to give me something to turn down and to make sure that uh, I have enough meat there to fit up uh, on a, any given frame. There's only one way to measure the length of the frame that is important, uh, and that is from the muzzle side of the uh, pivot pin to the face of the breech of the action. Uh, I measure this out and have found quite a variance in different frames depending on how old they are and how hard they've been used. Uh, I figure that uh, a uh, 2.1 um, is will not, probably not quite fit, but is a good place to turn to to start before you start final fitting. I take a corresponding measurement on the barrel stub using the pin and the face of the barrel uh, to take my measurement, subtracting uh, this the uh, length of the of the uh, action measurement which we just took from this figure will tell you how much you have to take off the breech end of the barrel and the stub 
the two and get it to fit. Because the uh, face off is going to have a large interrupted uh, cut as the hinge bar comes around, I find it advantageous to uh, uh, lock the uh, carriage uh, down so it can't be pushed uh, as that interrupted cut is made. Facing off the stub and barrel <clears throat> to the uh, de predetermined uh, length means that you'll have a hinge bar that is flying around. Be very careful with your hands as sometimes this large piece of metal uh, is hard to see where it exactly is, but certainly felt if it touches the knuckle. One thing I like about turning between centers is that I can open up the steady rest and try the um, uh, frame on the barrel uh, without taking it off the lathe. Uh, and you can't do that in a four jaw. So here I have mounted a, a contender frame onto the uh, stub barrel and uh, see how it fits up. I like to have about three thousandths of an inch gap between the uh, face of the barrel and the and the face of the of the frame uh, measured with a uh, feeler gauge. Uh, you'll set your head space with the chamber always but uh, this this makes sure that the barrel closes easily and and dependably every time. Thank you for watching video two, uh, and I hope that you'll continue on through the rest of the seven videos to get the complete picture of how to mount a barrel. You'll find this to be a very productive way to put your used barrels or uh, new barrel blanks that you purchased uh, into practical use, whether for sale or for fun.